Donna J. Johnhan presents Your Mental Stretch with Donna podcast A monthly podcast that shows you how to use your mind and imagination to help you become more productive at what you do Donna shows you how easy it is to get rid of cobwebs and clutter in your mind and imagination and to spark and stimulate your creative juices The Mental Stretch can be done anywhere at any time of the day and for any length of time. See how you can overcome trauma, drama, and stress by engaging in Donna's mental stretch. For after all, the mental stretch is just another way for you to relax, recharge, regurgitate, and renew. No more stress and sadness. No more feelings of being overwhelmed and being overtaken. Sit back and let Donna show you how her mental stretch can help you to be free from those everyday challenges and irritants. It's time to start your mental stretch. Hello there. I am Donna J. Jodhan, your host for the Mental Stretch with Donna or Your Mental Stretch with Donna podcast. I am extremely happy to be here with you for this month. It is the month of November. I can't believe that it is the month of November. Oh my goodness. And you know, as they say, November is the month that is probably one of the most difficult to deal with. And why is this? I think it's because it's one of the darkest months of the year. Despite the fact that it is the month before the holiday season. But the sun sets earlier and the sun rises later. So what we need to do is to take all of this into account. When we start to look at our mental well-being. And as I say, my mental stretch really focuses on the mental stretch. The mental well-being, the ability to make sure that our mental welfare is taken care of. Because if we can have stretches for the back, the neck, the chest, the legs, the toes, the fingers, almost everything, why can't we have a mental stretch? Why not? Our mental capabilities and our mental abilities are so important for us to take care of. And over the last few years, I have developed something called the mental stretch. It is where I show you how to conquer trauma, drama and stress, plus a lot more. How to sweep the cobwebs and clutter out of your minds and your imaginations and how to spark your stimulative juices and to stimulate them as well. The mental stretch that I have developed can be used almost everywhere, anywhere, at any time of the day and for any length of the time. So you can do my mental stretch while lying in bed. You can do it while sitting at your kitchen table or your living room table. You can also do it while relaxing in front of your TV or walking in the park or almost anywhere. And your mental stretch can last for any length of time. As short or as brief as one minute or less or as long as you know 20 minutes half hour an hour anything you want but it's all is it is all based on using strategies that are natural strategies that are logical that you can use to help you with your mental stretch so before I dive into this month's mental stretch, I'd like to thank my listeners for coming in and for sharing their thoughts, their comments, their suggestions, and their feedback with me. 
I'd like to thank my good friend Victor Guvia for his continued support. And I'd also like to thank my so-called little brother, Mike Cicello, who continues to produce my shows for me. Thank you, Mike. And now it is time for us to dive into this month's show. And what we do here is that we have a number of motivators and stimulators to help you out. Okay? And what I'm going to do for this first segment of my show is to use the sense of hearing to help you get into the swing of things so that you can start stretching and stretching your mental capabilities and your mental abilities. Okay? So... For this segment, we're going to use the sense of hearing. Think of church bells ringing. Ah, yes. <coughs> you may not be located close to a church, but it is not difficult to imagine the sound of church bells ringing, ringing loud and clear, echoing around you. Try to imagine church bells ringing, okay? Try to think also of honking horns. Now, you may say to me, well, you know, those honking horns, they are irrit irritating, they are a pain in the butt, they, I don't like to hear honking horns, but sometimes I tell you, when you hear the sound of a honking horn, your body naturally reacts to it <clears throat> and soon your imagination and your mind kick into gear and soon after that you find yourself recharging, regurgitating, refreshing, renewing, reformatting. It's a very interesting way to stretch your mental capabilities. I've used it several times I've used or imagined the sound of honking horns it could be as much as you make it out to be don't think of it as an irritant <coughs> think of it <coughs> excuse me as a motivator that you can use okay and for the third suggestion for this segment for the sense of hearing, think of organ music. Organ music could be very peaceful. It could be very melodious. It could be very, very quieting. Now, you may have CDs of organ music that you'd like to uh, put on and play. Or think about it. Organ music is very, very, very peaceful. Okay. Now, if you would like to share your thoughts, comments, feedback, and suggestions on this, please send me an email to askdonnaonblindlife at gmail.com. That is askdonnaonblindlife at gmail.com. Tell me what you think of my suggestions. Okay, <clears throat> for the next segment, I'm going to start using the sense of smell. Okay, the sense of smell. Let's get ready for this. Okay, think of a bakery. You walk into a bakery and what do you smell? Baking bread, baking pastries baking cakes and at this time of the year more bakeries are going to be engaged in baking think of these fragrances and these scents wafting towards you tickling your nostrils as you stand in the doorway of a bakery go into the bakery and smell it 
Mm-mm-mm. Smell, smell, smell. It's easy to imagine the fragrances and smells of a bakery. It's not difficult at all. You don't have to go into a bakery necessarily to conjure up this smell. Just think of it as you sit there. Okay? Think of a restaurant. You go into a restaurant. And again, for this segment, we're using the sense of smell. But you can also use the sense of taste and the sense of sight. But we're concentrating on the sense of smell. The smell of various types of food in a restaurant. Again, you don't have to go into a restaurant <clears throat> to smell. Just sit there, relax, recharge, regurgitate, refresh, renew, reformat. And think of the smells of a restaurant, one of your favorite restaurants, as you sit there. I'm telling you that my strategy works when it comes to using one of your senses or a combination of senses to help you, you know, deal with such things as trauma, drama, stress, distress, a bit of depression, sadness, and replace all of these feelings with feelings of happiness, joy, peace, okay, um, get up and go kind of thing, okay. So think of the scent or fragrances of a restaurant. It may be a, too, a bit early for this particular scent, but how about the scent of pine-scented Christmas trees? You usually get this when you go to an outdoor um, store or somewhere like that and there are Christmas trees being readied for sale. Take in the scent of pine, mm, tickling your nostrils. Or you know what you can do? You can buy a tin of scented pine air freshener and spray it around your kitchen or your living room. It is a substitute for pine-scented Christmas trees. And trust me when I tell you that you can feel this tickling your nostrils. And then you can feel your body start to jerk with motivation, with all kinds of feelings of let's get up and go. Stretch your mental abilities. Stretch your mental capabilities. Okay? And if you have any thoughts on this, send an email to me at askdonna on blindlife at gmail.com. Askdonna on blindlife at gmail.com. Now for the third segment of my monthly Mental Stretch podcast. The sense of taste. Okay. Sense of taste. Think of this. Eggnogs. It could be non-alcoholic. It could be alcoholic. Think of the taste of eggnogs rolling off your tongue. Mm -hmm. Simply rolling off of your tongue. Sweet, sweet and savory. Allow your body to literally adopt this taste as you sit there. Maybe you can get a glass of nice cold eggnog or if you like it could be warm but just allow the body to simulate itself into the taste of eggnog and soon your mind and your imagination will start to cooperate cobwebs and clutter will soon disappear and your stimulative juices will start to spark I guarantee it. 
taste of short bread. Munch, munch, munch. Again, rolling off your tongue as you sit there. Use your imagination and your mind to help you think of the taste of short bread. Christmas cookies. It may be a bit early for Christmas cookies, but it's never too early in the month of November for Christmas cookies. Oh, no. Maybe you could bake your own Christmas cookies. Maybe you could visualize what you want to put into your Christmas cookies. So it's not just the sense of taste. It's a sense of sight, sense of smell, a bit of everything. Okay? Christmas cookies. Send me an email with your thoughts, your suggestions, your comments, and your feedback to ask Donna on Blind Life at gmail.com. And now for the fourth and final segment of my uh, ment- Your Mental Stretch with Donna podcast. How about using the sense of touch? Let's think of touching a Christmas tree with all those branches, with the pine pine needles. Think of the decorations you're going to run your fingers over and the lights. Allow yourself, immerse yourself into the Christmas tree as you stand there touching it, feeling it, visualizing it smelling it. See all the different senses that you can use in the mental stretch. I guarantee you it is going to work. Allow your body to immerse yourself and use this strategy whenever you are faced with trauma, drama, stress, distress, When you're feeling a bit down and sad, when you're having problems dealing with time crunches, okay, such as reorganizing your schedule, organizing your countertop, organizing anything, organizing your kids, okay, think of it, your mental stretch. Think of touching wrapping paper. Yes, you're getting ready for the holiday season and you're going to be using wrapping paper to wrap those gifts that you're going to be giving to your loved ones. Run your fingers along wrapping paper and allow yourself to hear the rustle of the wrapping paper. Okay. And my final suggestion for this month, a wine bottle. To the touch, the wine bottle is cool. Wrap your hands around the wine bottle. Allow your body to immerse itself into the feel of this wine bottle. Soon your body will be jerking and saying to you, let's go, let's go. And it will be sending messages to your mind and your imagination saying, hey, wake up. It's time to go. Okay. Again, send me an email at askdonnaonblindlife at gmail.com. Okay. The next segment of my show concentrates on using the letter C to try and motivate yourself. Calibrate. Think of the word calibrate. You're going to use this word to help motivate yourself. Candid. Think of the word candid that can help you to be more honest with yourself as you go about your daily business. Carry out. You're going to carry out something important for yourself today or something that you need to do today. Carry out. Celebrate. It may be anything from the smallest 
to the largest things. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. Time to get your body in tune with your mind and your imagination to celebrate. Change. Maybe it's time for some change. Nothing wrong in change, you know. Change is always good. Think of change as being something for the better. Crystal. Some of us like crystals. I do. Some of us don't have crystals. That's okay. But think of a little crystal ornament that you hold in your hand. Squeeze it gently. And again, allow the body to immerse itself and then to wake up the mind and the imagination. Okay? Clarify. Clarify for yourself what you want to do for today. It's a good word to be stuck on for the day. Clarify, clarify, clarify. Clever. Why not think of yourself as being clever for today? Hey, if no one else thinks you're clever, you think of yourself as being clever, and why not? Close. Okay? Maybe it's time to close a feeling that is not pleasant to you. Uh, or maybe close off some sort of encounter that you had with someone that wasn't very pleasant. Use the word close to bring to an end something that is not pleasant. Collect. Time to collect. Time to collect on something that you think you need to grab a hold of. It could be anything from collecting an object, from collecting a document, from collecting anything, but collect. Think of the word collect that you can use to help you you know, just tie up some loose ends. Commit. Something you want to commit to for today, moving forward. Commit to something important. Or it may not be that important. But it's a way to get started, to really kickstart your mental psyche. And the mental psyche will soon wake up the body and the body will wake up the mind and the imagination. And then you will start to spark and stimulate your creative juices. Commitment. It could be a small commitment for today. A commitment to maybe drink more water. A commitment to have a bowl of nice warm uh, clam chowder. A commitment to go for a walk. A commitment doesn't have to be anything serious. It is just something that you say you're going to do and you carry through with doing it. Concentrate. Concentrate on something that you want to do or something that needs to be done. Concentrate. Just allow your mind and your imagination to focus on something that needs to be done. Conquer. You could conquer anything that you want. The world is yours to conquer. Think of it that way. Your home is yours to conquer. It's all about using the word conquer to make sure that you have been able to take a hold of a circumstance and to say, yes, I did it. Convince again. Convince yourself that you can do something. You can do something. Don't let anyone tell you you cannot do it. You can do it. Courage. The word courage is a very interesting word to me. It is a word I use when I say I have the courage to stand up for something. I have the courage to do something. Again, you are helping to kickstart your mind and your imagination 
into action. Courageous. You're courageous because you decided to do something, get up and do something. Take care of business, as they say. Cope. Yes, you're coping with your trauma, your drama, your stress, your distress. You're coping with being able to organize your countertop, organize your kids, organize your schedule. Okay? Create. Hey, create is a very interesting word to use. You can create anything. You can create a recipe. You can create some crafts. You can create, I don't know, if you knit or you do pottery as I do, you can create that. You can create a game. You can create anything. The world is yours. A creation. Think of something you would like to create and then you use the word creation as a means of doing it. Crucial. What's crucial for you for today? Maybe nothing is crucial. Maybe something is crucial. But use the word crucial to ensure that you have searched your mind and your imagination and that you know that there is either nothing crucial for you to do or something crucial for you to do. Finally, the word crunch. Just recognize that you may have to deal with a time crunch today. Somebody wants something right away. They always do, don't they? Think of how you're going to imagine dealing with it. Nothing wrong with being in a crunch, you know. It's how you imagine it. All right, I have a quote for you to ponder. Here it is, and I'm going to say it very slowly. When it rains on your parade, look up rather than down without the rain there. Without the rain there, there would be no rainbow. Okay? So what it is really, when it rains, look up, not down. Because without the rain being there, there would be no rainbow. And this quote comes from Gilbert K. Chesterton, a well-known poet. Okay? Here is my brain teaser for this week. What is your favorite piece of footwear? <coughs> <coughs> yes, your favorite piece of footwear. For this time of the year, my favorite piece of footwear is my bedroom slippers. Nice, warm, and toasty. Yeah, keeps the body warm. Keeps the mind and imagination in check. Okay? Okay. Favorite alphabetical names. Beginning with the letter D. I just throw this, threw this in so that you think of something pleasant. For a girl, I know my name is Donna, but I like the name Dina or Dana. For a boy, I like the name Darius. Okay. What are your favorite names? And I'm going to end my podcast today with a wishable for you. A bottle of blessings. I'm going to put all my blessings in a bottle for you and send it off to you virtually. 
So folks, if you have any comments, suggestions, feedback, or thoughts, please do not hesitate to send it to me to askdonna on blindlife at gmail.com. Ask Donna on blindlife at gmail.com. I want to thank each and every one of you for having tuned in today. I thank my friend Victor Gouvier and my little brother Michael Ciuccello. Have a great rest of the day, a great rest of the week, a great rest of the month. And see you in December. Bye for now. That's it for this month. Donna hopes you enjoyed your mental stretch for today. She invites you to write at AskDonna on BlindLife at gmail.com. Share your thoughts and feedback. Stay well and stay safe. Until next month. <laughs> <laughs>